No, it's not gin and groans. This is a um, a video regarding driving and driving habits. Now, I consider myself to be a good driver. I would not say I'm perfect. I get angry at people sometimes, but um, I am not as angry as some people around me and uh, when I'm a passenger in their vehicles uh, I tend to put an extra crease in the passenger seat because they are not looking ahead they're not thinking about what they're doing they're getting angry for no reason and some of the things I watch them do make me cringe and I don't understand why and obviously I cannot tell them to shit don't do this don't do that you know they're in charge of the vehicle it's their choice um, it's just that when I'm a passenger it uh, sometimes scares the shit out of me I've got a few notes here that I'm going to go through and um, tell you what, what what they do and you decide whether or not I'm just being picky or whether they are being dumb tailgating this is one thing that I do not like riding someone's ass why that there to me there is no reason to it you will not make them go faster and this is where I will put my hands up and say yeah I'm a bad boy someone tailgates me I'm afraid my right leg gets very tired and I back off on the grass yeah not a good thing to do but uh, it's just get off my ass don't do that to me I'm going to go a reasonable speed. Now, and, and that's that's the thing. You know, if the, if the speed limit is, let's say, 45, that doesn't mean you have to do 45. That's the maximum. Maximum legal speed limit. And let's face it, most of us don't stick to that anyway. But if it says 45 and I want to do 30, that's my choice. Getting up my ass isn't going to help you. You're not going to get past me. You're not going to drive through me. Then when the opportunity arises, drive around me. I feel like doing 30 and a 45. That's my choice. You will not make me do 45 if I don't feel like it. Uh, roaring away from the traffic lights. You know, the traffic light changes. And over here in America, as soon as the light goes green, everybody expects you to put your pedal to the metal. And if you dare delay for a nanosecond, the guy behind you is leaning on his horn. Guy, girl, doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it, it's pathetic. Again, you won't make me go any faster. I'll pull away at whatever speed I pull away at. What's next? Ah, oh, this is a classic one. When someone, let's say, comes from another lane and moves over in front of you in the gap that you have left. Now, I tend to leave a reasonable gap because, you know, reaction time may be a little slower. I can't see normally what's past them although I do try and look about five cars ahead, but sometimes you can't see, so I, I tend to back off and, and give a sensible gap. But some people just get so annoyed because they left a gap and the guy, girl, pulled in front into the gap. Um, okay. I guess it bugs some people and then they're up their ass for however long they're in front of them they're right up their ass and this this is people that I, I, I am a passenger with 
And I think, what the fuck? You're not, you're not achieving anything. You're not scaring them. They don't care that you're riding their bumper. And you are winding yourself up because now you're hovering between the gas pedal and the brake pedal because you never know what the fuck's going to happen. Just back off. What the hell? Does it really matter? No. Next. Ah. Last minute breaker. Oh dear. Riding right up to the last minute behind someone and then standing on the brakes. Good God, why? Stay back a bit. Relax. You see the brake lights come on in front of you? Take your foot off the gas. Drive up to them slowly. Without being, you know, stupid about it. But roaring up to them then standing on the brakes doesn't make a very comfortable ride for your passengers. Ah, oh dear. Holding the steering wheel. Oh my God. The norms are holding the steering wheel at 10 to 2 or quarter to 3. Yeah, pick your times, but you know what I mean by the hand position. Um, holding the steering wheel at 12.30. No good. Holding it at 9 o'clock. No good. You don't have control should an emergency happen and should there be something like a blowout. You are not in control. And, and holding it at 6.30 is ridiculous. Oh, and I, I, there is a person I travel with. Oh, God, and, and that scares the shit out of me, I must admit. They're not in control of the vehicle. Ah. Um, anger with something that's going on in their life. They allow that to translate to their driving. They're angry about, I don't know, something you said, something that happened to them, a phone call they received, an email, and they're so wound up and so angry about it that anybody else on the road, and you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not their fault that you're pissed off about whatever it is. And all you're going to do again is wind yourself up and maybe even have an accident. Oh, oh, oh this, this is a lovely one. When you get in a car and let's, for argument's sake, uh, it's a car you share um, with someone else, you know, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. And you each are physically different. So the mirrors need to be in a different position. And a lot of modern cars, of course, have the button you press, you know, number one, number two. Um, set the mirrors correct for you. There is a person I travel with and they never set the mirrors correctly as far as I can see. Because come the time when they need to merge onto a, a motorway, freeway, um, or overtake somebody, they're shifting their body rather than just glancing left, right into the mirrors. They're shifting their body to see if it's clear. And whilst they're doing that, they've got their hand on the steering wheel and they go, oh, I need to look over there. And, and they pull the steering wheel. Now, they're not looking at the person in front that they're trying to get round. They're moving the car to the left, which is probably giving the shits to the person next to them. And if, if the person in front decides to brake for whatever reason, which is perhaps why you want to get around them because they're going slow, you're not even looking at them and you're going to hit them. 
you're going to hit them and you're going to take out the guy next to you as well. Because you didn't adjust your mirrors just so you could glance. And you glance left, you glance right. Great! That works because you still know what's going on in front of you. Yeah. Let's see, where else are we going with this? A navigation system. I would say pretty much every navigation system these days is a verbal navigation system. I know it is on my phone and I put in the address where I'm going to and whatever voice I set tells me where to go other than the one in the passenger seat and also tells me where to go but that's a different thing. Um, Granted, they are not always um, telling you in time. So you have to bear that in mind that they may or may not tell you, yes, that's the exit you want, you just passed it. But <laughs> you know, shit happens sometimes. Mostly, mostly the navigation systems are uh, up to date and they go, yeah, you know, you're going to need to do this, you're going to need to do that, uh, you're going to need the left lane, you're going to need the right lane, blah, blah, blah. And that's great. You don't need to look at it. There is a person I go with, and they're constantly looking at the screen of the navigation, which is, of course, in their phone. You don't need to do that. Don't look at that. Look at where you're fucking driving. Good God. What's the matter with you? Don't your ears work? Right, let's move on a little further. Um, preventing people from pulling in front of you. So, you know, you're going along and you're doing 50 miles an hour. Let's say the speed limit is 65 miles an hour. And so you're going slower. And, or, or, or maybe not, maybe you're doing 65. And there's a gap between you and the guy in front. Getting pissed again because someone moves into that gap. Back off. What fucking difference does it make to you? You're going to get there a nanosecond later. And I know I've mentioned this previously, but it's just one of those things that really gets up my nose. Um, with that, and, and getting back to that somewhat, you know, the person in, let's say, in the right-hand lane has been signalling that they would like to move over to the lane you're in. And you stop them. You make sure you keep up with the guy in front so that they can't pull over. Why? And, you know, you, you've been doing this for two, three miles. And this person is letting you know that they would like to pull over. Back off. Let them pull over. And maybe they'll sit in front of you. Which, again, you're going to be a nanosecond late. Or maybe then they'll move over to the next lane and go off to wherever it is they're going off to. You know, left, right, whatever. A little courtesy for other drivers. Yeah, we all get angry, we all get pissed occasionally, it happens. But come on, we cause less accidents this way. Speed limits, and that's the that's thing. Excuse me a second. Speed limits. It's 65 miles an hour speed limit on most freeways in America. Most people do 85. Okay, that's fine. But if I'm doing 65, don't ride my ass. I'm doing the speed limit. Go around me, piss off, I'll see you when you have your accident. Or when you get a ticket. Don't get upset with me because I'm obeying the law and you're not. Turning corners, oh my god. Turning corners with your arms crossed. Now, I will say 
that in certain instances you may need to do that. But more often than not, you can just shuffle the wheel slowly. But when you're in that position, if something goes wrong, it's very hard to correct. If you've gone in that position and you need to do something to correct, not so difficult. Your arms aren't fucked up. I know sometimes it's convenient to cross your arms, but when you're in the situation where you're like that, if you suddenly need to go that way a bit more, you can't. But if you turn the steering wheel like that, and you need to go that way a bit more, you could always let go with that hand and bring that one round. Or you could let go with that hand and bring that one round. Just common sense. Oh dear. Fiddling with knobs while driving. Now, most um, radios these days you can pre-select the radio stations you like. Your CDs you can load up before you leave for your journey. You can make things a lot um, more, less interactive whilst you're driving. And, and that's the thing, you're driving. It's not a right, it's a privilege to drive. And you need to pay attention to it. You're in control excuse me, of a lethal weapon. And you need to be in control of it all the time. Sitting there twiddling with the radio knobs to find the station, fucking with the AC. Oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. Oh yeah, you know, what, what about this, what about that? Oh, what's in the glove box? Oh, what about my cup of coffee, my cheeseburger? Fuck off! It's not a fucking restaurant. It's a car. Drive. Pay attention to what you're doing. I want you hitting me because you got a phone call or a text oh don't you fucking get me started on that if you text or phone while you're driving you deserve to die no two ways about it and I've seen some horrific things where people were texting and rear-ended and they removed that person's body in two pieces from the back of the car back of the truck because they drove straight into it and ugh Let's put it this way, it was bloody revolting. The bottom half and the top half were not joined. <sighs> one last little thing. And this one is just maybe me being more anal than I should. When you're gonna go somewhere, assuming, assuming you know the route. Assuming you know the route. So I'm not talking about, you know, you're going on a long drive and you pump it into your phone and, you know, you just do what the phone tells you. I'm talking about when, you know, you're going to, let's say, you're going to go to three or four different shops and you think, okay, I've got to go there, there, there and there. Rather than just go, think about your route and think about reducing the opportunity for accidents and by that I mean okay in America here you know we drive on the right so um, I want to do that over there and that over there but if I go out there I've got to turn left which means I have to cross lanes of traffic and that's a potential for an accident but if I go out there and go that way and turn right I can get to this store and then when I want and that store and I can go to the next store and I can turn right again you reduce the odds of having an accident. Now, you know, maybe that's just me being silly, um, but I like to stay alive. I like to reduce the odds of potential accidents. Yes, I'm quite capable of pulling out and crossing traffic, but I don't need to risk it for no reason. I'll think about where I gotta go, uh, and the route around me and it makes the drive more pleasant. One other thing, driving on freeways, um, one of the people I go with, they insist on sitting in the middle lane, which means they have to look in the rear view mirror, look in the right view mirror, look in the left view mirror 
and constantly, well, <clears throat> let me say this again, that's what they should be doing. Um, and of course, paying attention to what's going on in front. Um, I personally, I don't necessarily obey the, um, the English rule of, you know, overtake, pull back, overtake, pull back, overtake, pull back, because that can be really fucking annoying. Um, what I'll do is I'll look at the road I'm on and obviously if uh, I can get over to the right hand lane and, and sit there because you know I'm not driving particularly fast then the only mirrors that I need to concentrate on is the centre mirror for what's behind me and the left mirror again bear in mind this is in America and the person in front of me or if I get into the HOV lane because I have a passenger and I can use that lane, then the only mirror I need to concentrate on again is the uh, centre mirror and the right mirror and whatever's in front of me. So I've eliminated one area of danger because if you sit in the middle lane or one of those middle lanes, you've now got to pay attention to everything all around you and most drivers are not capable of that. My father was um, taught to drive by the police academy and not the one where they talk funny. And <laughs> it was uh, Hendon, I think it was, the driving school. And I try to adopt a lot of what my father told me. I never took the test there, uh, although I did take an advanced driving test. If you are driving along, you might want to try this experiment for yourself. Do a commentary. Tell yourself. Do, do it out loud. I mean, presumably when you know nobody else is in the car. Well, you can. That's, that's your choice. Um, and go, you know, okay, um, white car over in the left-hand lane, red car in the right-hand lane. Behind me there is a black car. He's signaling. He's moving over. I'm going down the street, uh, I see there is a pedestrian there coming out behind a parked car. Uh, traffic light ahead of me, oh no, there's a stop sign there. Okay, I'm going to be turning right, so let's signal, let's do a commentary. Believe me, it's very good for your concentration because you are looking around and paying attention. Alright, that's enough of this driving rant. Um, hope you find it of interest, if you don't too fucking bad. Um, I wanted to do it and I wanted to put it out there and um, give me your comments. Tell me what you think. You know, if you think I'm being a total prick, well, that's, that's okay. You can say that. It doesn't matter. But maybe by listening to the things that I'm saying uh, other people around me do, um, maybe you'll think about how you're driving and maybe you'll save your life who knows and when you finish driving get out in the garage and do some shit bye <laughs>